The tornado came through about 10, 30, 11 o'clock here in Dawson Springs. And here at camp, it simply looked like a really bad thunderstorm. About 11 o'clock, our power went out. And so the security lights that light up everything over the pool house and all of the cabin spaces, camp's never been so dark. I think 4-H'ers statewide are helping in numerous ways, whether they are doing local drives, collecting money, and donating to their 4-H office, and we are trying to funnel those, those funds into families and communities that need them most right now. The Kentucky 4-H Foundation has a 4-H'ers Helping 4-H'ers Fund, and I would encourage anyone interested in helping the current relief efforts is to go onto the Kentucky 4-H Foundation page and donate in that way, or they could also get on the Kentucky 4-H Facebook page and find an Amazon link that leads you directly to most needed items. Our water was restored um, by the city on Monday morning, so we've had running water, though it's not drinkable, and um, Groves Electric, Greg Russell, Mike Russell, and EMA representatives worked tirelessly to get our power back up and running. So since Tuesday evening, We've had electricity here at camp powered by a generator. And so camp is fully operational and we've been able to open our doors to first responders and volunteer organizations who have been pouring into our city, offering their support for Dawson Springs and the surrounding communities. 4-H camp in this area is just a treasure. It's really, a lot of people refer to it as a, a place of magic. We, we just love this camp and we would do anything to support it and that's, that's evidence now as agents and volunteers are starting to come to 4-H camp and help out with the disaster relief. We've got 4-H volunteers who are down in Sparks Hall right now and they are sorting through all of the truckloads of clothing and cleaning supplies and um, paper goods and all of the things that people are donating from all across the state and they're down there trying to find space for it, trying to organize it so that eventually the, the victims who are without homes can come in here and they can, they can select things that they need. So we're sort of, um, uh, you know, a supply place for those, those direct outreach places in the city of Dawson. I was downtown grabbing lunch and talking with one of the the volunteers who'd come in and was helping to feed the workers and the families who didn't have a way to cook food. And he had lost absolutely everything the night before, but he showed up and he was making pork sandwiches for everybody in town. I think the most important thing that we can all do is one, think about the people in Western Kentucky, keep them in our thoughts and our prayers, but also remember that right now, some people don't know what they need, that this is a long-term situation, and we're going to be facing the impact of this situation for days, weeks, months, and even years. So keep these people in mind as you go through your daily life, wherever you are, and also remember that even down the road that donating your time, money, energy, those things are still needed days, weeks, months from today.